Hi, guys. Welcome back to Finding Your Indie. This is our Monday Marketing Tips and Tricks, and I'm Bonnie Paulson. And I'm Mandy Stevens. And we are here today. We have kind of a fun one. I think it's fun. I know Mandy and I were just talking about it, and we both actually love the data. So this is a fun conversation, but a lot of people uh, tend to get wrapped up in the data. And so we're going to talk about how to stop overanalyzing the data and stop, you know, walking through the weeds of data. There are some really easy ways to understand if your ads are making money. And we're, and we're talking about Facebook and AMS ads here. And, you know, if you're if you're making money, if you're not making money, if the ads are working, if the ads aren't working, we're going to talk about are you overanalyzing or are you oversimplifying? Like we can talk about that. Some people uh, under <laughs> under analyze. You know, yeah, right. Like ads are intimidating. You know, yeah, to they, a lot they, of people. They really are. And the data around them, just the word data, I know a lot of people are like, no, I don't do numbers. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> but you can, but you do do numbers. You do do, you do numbers because you are interested in spending some money to make some money. And that's all, that's all we're, we're, all we're talking about. Are you spending enough money to make enough money? Are you spending too much money and not making enough money? And then the, the little tweaks and stuff that you can do without going crazy. So let's talk about that. So the first thing is, is that analyzing data doesn't have to be confusing. It can be very simple. Uh, a tool that we recommend is Author Helper Suite. I'll put the link down below. It makes it very simple. For instance, here's a graph. You can see this graph. It says that there is book income, KU page reads, book sales, maybe paperbacks, maybe audio, and your ad spend is right there along with it. Like that doesn't get any clearer. Your promotional spend can be featured yeah. there as well. I mean, that takes all of the guesswork out of it. I've, I've, I'm spending money. Am I making more than that ad spend line is? And I'm, I've got that, that highlighted with that pink line right there. It literally is showing you, here's your ad spend. Here's your income. There you go. Like that takes all the guesswork out of it. However, what if you're inside of it and you're like, oh, I don't want to do, you know, help author helper suite. I'm a spreadsheet person, or I just want to use the KDP dashboard. And I want to make sure that, you know, we're going to talk about that. But the point is, is that don't get worked up about all of the data. Facebook shows you more data points than you actually need to have in the author realm. Oh. <gasps> I saw this one that was like attribution and it was like seven day, 14 day. And then it was like broken down by, it was just, I was like, look, I don't care. I get yeah. it, but I don't care. <laughs> so yeah. there's things that you don't need. You just, you don't need them. When you are, when you go overboard on your analyzing, what you're doing is you're limiting the capabilities of what your ads are going to do because you're saying, oh, if you don't make this much money or have this CTR or this CPC in 12, in 12 days, I'm going to turn you off. Well, you literally might be cutting your ads off at the knees because they don't have a chance to learn properly. They don't have a chance to react and they don't have a chance to actually grow and have your pages respond. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more down um, later in the video. <clears throat> but I guess the message as before we go forward would probably be just keep things simple. Would you agree, Mandy? I do. I do. Keep it simple. And, you know, don't compare day to day, you know, because a Monday and a Thursday are going to be different. Uh, even week yes. to week, depending upon what's going on in the world, you know, all the things check out. Oh. Yeah. So <laughs> check out our market fluctuation video that we have here. It's a thing. So basic tenants you need to understand with your ad data. So Bonnie, what do you what is the CPC? So CPC is one of them. We only have about three that we really need to worry about. CPC is going to be the first one. And that is going to be cost per click. And that literally, even if you're even if you're doing CPM, which is cost per mil, like you're paying for, for impressions, you still need to know what your result is, which is CPC and how much are you paying. And that will tell you if you are targeting your audience correctly. That'll tell you if your ads are like maybe your image has font on it, text, font, whatever. It'll have text on it. That'll tell you that if your CPC is too high. It'll tell you if your audience is too broad or too narrow. CPC is a really good indicator of where you're going with your ad your ad direction. Is it the right direction? Is it the bad, you know, is it the wrong direction? And it will, and your CPC can tell you that. And it's actually really, really helpful. Are yeah, you going to explain what the CTR is? Yes. Thank you. The second one is CTR. And this can tell you if you're targeting correctly with the message. So your message might be sweet romance and your targeting might be steamy romance. And if you're literally saying this is a sweet romance, you know, clean read, whatever, and you're targeting maybe 50 shades and you're targeting sex in the city, you're targeting some really dirty things. And I say dirty with love, trust me. But you also are like, <laughs> you know, there's no like 
there's no connotation here. It's just, are you steamy or not? But you're sending the wrong message to the, you're sending the right message to the wrong reader, or you're sending the wrong message to the right reader. So you just want to make sure that your targeting is correct. And that's one thing that CTR tells you. If your CTR percent stands for click-through rate, and that just means that out of a thousand people, a uh, hundred people clicked. That means you have a 10% CTR rate. If you have one person out of a thousand, you have a 0.01% click through rate, and that sucks. So yeah. <laughs> you, you're, you're going to look be, at that ad. <laughs> yeah, you really need to look at that ad, that ad set, whatever's going on, something's going on there. But CTR is a really good indicator of audience and message delivery. Those are the two things that CTR tells you very, very clearly. And it's very easy to be like, oh yeah, they are doing, like the ad is doing its job, right? It's it's getting attention, it's getting seen. And that's what CTR shows for that. Will you explain to everybody what conversion rate is? Ooh, I love conversion rate. So conversion rate is taking it a step further. This is where the conversion rate is not the job of your ads. The conversion rate is the job of the landing page. What we're doing is the ad's job is to say, okay, I've shown this ad to a thousand people. I have a 10% um, CTR. That means that a hundred people have clicked this link and made it to the landing page. So a hundred people have made it to the landing page. Your conversion rate is how many books or reads or downloads that you've had pulled out of that hundred clicks, right? So let's say you had four people download the book and you really can't tell if you downloaded, like if a book's been downloaded, you can kind of track it with ranks and whatever and page reads, but really you can't track downloads. But let's say you had, let's say we're just gonna look at sales. So if you take KU out of it, we're just gonna look at just regular sales and you had four people buy the book out of a hundred. That means your conversion rate is 4%. That's not terrible. Like that's, that's pretty good. If you're delivering a very transparent message with your ads to a really good target audience, you should be getting higher than that. Like you want to aim for higher than that. So that just means that you have landing page optimization that you need to get. Um, you might also consider putting them somewhere else besides sending them to Amazon or to a retailer. Maybe you have like your own landing page where it's just you and not other books that you're competing with because your landing page is not your landing page. Your landing page has your book, and a billion other books showing and it's distracting. And every time I go to Amazon with an Am with a book ad, I actually look at my cart. Oh, I forgot those were in there. And I forget I was there for the book and I go to- so And we're squirrels. We click on one thing and end up getting other, you know, other yeah. books. I've done it a million times. Yeah, and it's not intentional. It's just, that's mm -hmm. what the name of the game I'm like, is. Ooh, look at that book. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or, ooh, I did read this one, but maybe, oh, what's this one down here in the sponsored product section? Yeah, let me grab that. I was on a, a author's page the other day and it was socks descriptions in the review. And I was like, that distracted me from the book. Like, <laughs> right? That like, it's so weird. That's so weird. But that's, so what you're doing is you're trying to read your conversion rate. If your conversion rate is accurate, then you know that your ads are working, your landing page is doing its job, and the whole thing is copacetic with each other. Everything's playing well together in the sandbox. So those are the major tenets that I look at when you're, that I suggest that you look at when you're trying to understand your data. The ultimate data points though, as we're gonna move into these for determining, the, as the determining factors for your ads and your expenditures would probably be, what are you spending versus what are you making? So yeah. what, right? Like everything. So in ads and marketing, you should have a threshold. If you're spending $1,500 a month to make $1,000 a month, that's gross, not net, you lost $500. And I don't want people to think, oh, well, I'm growing right now. No, you're not. No, you're not. You should never be spending more than what you're making. And if you are, then you need to address some of the situation. Like why? What is happening? Is it the landing page? Is it the length of the books? Is it the price of the books? Is it the quality of the books? Is it, I mean, that's that's really what it is because the ad's job, and we're gonna have another video about this later. An ad's job is literally to take a person from point A to point B. It's to get them from the newspaper in the, you know, when you open up those newspaper leaflet things and you're like, oh, look it, it's a toaster for $5. I'm going to go and I'm going to go there. Like that's the ad's goal is to get them from the mailbox to the store. A Facebook ad is to get them from Facebook, scrolling through their friends' crap, scrolling through their pages, doing all the things. That goal is to get them from Facebook to the landing page of the book or the newsletter landing page, or the whatever, the direct sales page, it doesn't matter. That's literally the ad's job. 
It is not the ad's job to sell the book. That is not the job. job. That's your job. That's your job. That's your landing pages job. So if you are not doing something correct, then it's your fault and not the not the ad's fault. And again, yeah. the, let's, I mean, to be fair, it could be that maybe the message is incorrect, which is why we always say mimic the landing page for the ads. Your audience might be incorrect, but you would already see that in the CTR and in the CPC. So your conversion rate tells you and that, you know, how much you're spending versus how much you're making, that tells you that there's a problem. If book one is consistently selling, but you're not making money on the rest of the series, that tells you there's something wrong with the writing or something wrong with the series. Yeah, there's a disconnect between book one and book two. So Yes, definitely. Or even a disconnect between book one and the message that's being given. Like maybe your your blurb is excellent, but your book sucks. And I hate to say that, but it's it's fact, right? Like it's reality. Yeah. We make jokes sometimes about we can sell the first book, but it's up to you to sell the rest. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Good point. That is not, um, as ad managers, we're constantly trying to help our clients, like, right? We're trying to help with the marketing. We're trying to help with promotions and help with ads. And we're trying to make sure that we're giving as much help as we can because we're personally invested in our clients. We are sick. We get sick when they have failures and we get super elated when they have success. I got off a call with a client and she was telling me about these plans that she had. And I literally danced for her. I was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it was the end of the call. I mean, it was great. I got off the call with her and I was just so excited for the things that she was doing and the, the successes that she had. I also got off a call with another client that we had to part ways because she was running out of cash. Things weren't working well. And I just felt sad for her. And I literally cried. I felt so bad for her. It was just nothing I could do, but I still am invested, right? I was making sure that as we're getting there, but something wasn't happening that needed to happen. So it's, there's a lot of ups and ups and downs. Um, ad management is a really, really hard job. It really is <laughs> very a stressful, stressful job. Yeah, very yeah. stressful. <laughs> yeah, I, and I think it's because, like I said, we're so invested in our clients. But imagine doing so. How we feel, like how you feel when you're running ads for your own business. That oh my gosh, I'm running ads and I don't know if they're working. And um, I'm making some money, but I don't know which one is doing it. Well, we know that stuff. We know what's working. We know what's what not working. But imagine that feeling if you're like, you know, the ads are doing their job. You know what they're supposed to be doing, and then suddenly, the money just isn't coming through, and it's because of something outside of your control, something you don't know what's happening. Right? Like as as authors, that's your business. You've got to know it, and that's part of it. Understanding what you're spending versus what you're making. Are you, and are you even ready? We've got another video on, are your books ready? Join our challenge that we have. We have a seven day challenge on, you know, is your book ready for marketing? So if your books aren't even ready for marketing, you should not be spending crap on it. Yep. You're throwing money away. I agree. So yeah. how, how long should someone wait to see cumulative growth? Oh, I love that. So yeah. great question. Cumulative growth is when you have a compounding, right? I, I like to call it compounding interest. I've said that before. When you have the first book sell, you are hoping that they're going to buy book two the next day. Like I, I understand this, this mentality. I get it. It's how I feel when I run ads on my own stuff. Like I want to see books two sell on the next day and then book three sell the next day. That's not, that's not reality. Reality is you have about 30 days before they make it to the second book. That is reality. Whale readers will sit there and go through stuff. That's, that's about 15% of the readers out there. Then you have the normal readers, which take 30 to 60 days to get through a book. And that is reality. So you want to give, so cumulative growth, if you know your CPC using the simple data points that we told you, if your CPC is solid, it's not high, if you have CTR is really good, whether it's higher or just kind of medium at about 5%, stick there. If you're seeing that your book one is selling and the rank's getting better, so you know it's getting downloads and you're getting page reads, hang in there. You're going to lose money for a, for a week or two. You, you are. Like, it's just, and that's why I'm always like, Mandy and I are always saying, don't test higher than 5 or $10 a day. Don't do it because you're going to blow a bunch of cash. And all you're doing is testing. So there's no reason to test out at $10,000 ad spend a month. It's just not necessary. It, you can actually test to see, okay, this audience is going to be receptive. Once you understand your testing and you get through the first couple of weeks, then you can be like, hey, let's hit the, this with $100 today. Easy. That's fine. Go ahead and hit that. Do that if you want. It's really hard to say, hey, yes, this is the period that you want to give it. But you want to stick to it. When we take on clients, we usually say, give us about two months. Like yeah. initially give us two months. Let us see if we can do something with it. If we can't, we can't. Like your stuff's not ready. If we can, then we you have given us enough time to prove it. 
Yeah. You know, sometimes everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is going wonderful. Right. But then you have wars, you have, you know, other things, Mother's Day. Holidays. Yeah. (laughs) Mother's not reading because she's, you know, getting flowers and spending time with kids or whatever. Um, You you see all these different things. Pandemic. Yeah. People are sick. (laughs) Pandemic <laughs> was good for reading, but uh, but yeah, but like <laughs> I remember good when market. It, yeah, that was a good market fluctuation. Usually, yeah, yeah. it was. But but like you said, but then what happens when you come out of a pandemic? You got to work, and usually a lot of people have had to work more because mm-hmm. we have you know inflation and we've got all the other things going on, and so market and, fluctuation is a big deal. Are you allowing for market fluctuation with your data analysis? Yeah, you have to be realistic. And some people just aren't. Yeah. And it's hard because we want it so badly, right? We want to succeed so badly that we sometimes get in our own way. Failure is not a bad thing. Failure is a place where we can learn. But if you're just like, my books are just perfect. My covers are perfect. My plans are perfect. And you're not allowing for for failure. I think um, that's when you are actually going to really fail instead of giving your a chance, yourself a chance to learn and to succeed. So really what you want to do is you want to look at where are you now compared to where you were this time last year or this time in 2020, 2019 or this time last month. Like since you started the ads, what, how, how is the data looking? Is your revenue looking like it's up? Gross numbers looking like it's up. Your net probably not going to be up, but it's a possibility. Where you're seeing growth. You should be seeing growth. And you know, you're going to have more books than you did last year and the year before, hopefully. Yeah, exactly. And you should be seeing something. You should be seeing growth, like Mandy said. That could be subscribers. That could be readers. That could be um, sales. That could be follows. That could be a whole bunch of things. But you should be seeing growth of some kind. I, I mean, that's a whole bunch of other topics, and we'll hit all those. But pretty <laughs> we much, I mean, for hours. <laughs> we keep going. We just keep going. Yes, we just keep going. Uh, basically, though, analyzing the data for your ads does not need to be complicated. It does not need to be a headache. It's simply something that you need to sit down, look at the data and go through it. Am I doing this? Am I doing this? Am I doing this? Now, if you have ad managers like Mandy and I, we send out reports every month and we also talk to our clients throughout the month and we say, hey, this looks like this because of this. Or we say, we're going to put money here, but we think that we should put money here. Here's why. Yeah. And that's that's really important that you're understanding if you do have an ad manager and you don't get reports or explanations of where money's going and why it's doing what it's doing, have a discussion with them so that they they understand that you need to know what the what the data looks like and why what it's doing. And again, you're not you don't want to put anybody on the defensive because it's not their fault if your books aren't selling. But there might be a targeting issue. There might be an ads creatives issue. There might be a message inconsistency, and that's okay. Just open up the conversation so that you understand why things are where they're at. And as always, <laughs> <laughs> make sure that you have a goal. Make sure you're sticking to your brand. And make sure you're having fun. Lots and lots of fun. And invite a friend because success is better in teams. Um, Guys, thank you so much for joining us on this Monday Marketing Tips and Tricks. Oh, dude, I nailed that one. Yes, those names. I don't know who came up with these names, but (laughs) they're crazy. Uh, Hit like and subscribe and go join our free Facebook group. We're having discussions in there. Some really great ones. We love when people come and join us. And we just, we hope that you are doing great with your ads and that you are finding success in all that you do. Thanks, you guys.